everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I am bringing you a video that has been so highly requested. If you remember when I colored this fairy by Christine Karen, and I had brought you a video where I showed you how to do the sparkly iridescent wings, and I also did a video to show you how to do the tree branch while still being able to create textures and highlights and all of that. When I go back and I look at the comments on both of those videos, all of the comments are requesting that I show you how to do the translucent sleeves that I did here and then here where I wanted to make it look like the dress just kind of came down and there was actual material here kind of covering her stomach. And so I did kind of a translucent thing here as well. And so it's been requested over and over and over again. So I'm going to go ahead and show you all that today. And I'm also going to show you exactly how I get my pictures from the coloring book onto this tone tan paper that you guys know I love so much. So let me go ahead and move this off my desk. I am going to have to actually reprint this picture, so I'm going to show you how I do that, but I'm going to need to reprint it because of course I've already done this off camera and I want to show you guys how to do it. If you enjoy videos like this and you want to continue seeing my content, please do make sure you subscribe to my channel and also turn your bell notifications on so that you're always notified every time I post a new video. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you check the description box down below, everything that you see in this video will be down there if you're interested in purchasing something for yourself. You can also find links down there for my Facebook group as well as my email list if you would like to join me there. If you join my email list, you will get a color swatch chart sent back to you so that you can swatch all of your beautiful colored pencils. You will also find a link down there for my Patreon if you would like to support me there. Let's go ahead and get into this video. So first, this page comes from this book. This is Fairy and Fantasy Grayscale Coloring Book by Christine Karen. I believe that there is a flip through on my channel for this coloring book, but all of the images in this book are grayscale. And so this is what they look like. Now I just copy this page. I have a printer. Um, I know that so many of you ask what printer fits the paper that I color on and what printer works really well. My printer is actually the HP Office Pro 825. I will try to link that down in the description below. I don't know if now that HP may have something that is a little bit of an upgrade from that or maybe a new model of or an improved version of the one that I currently have, but I'll try to find a link and I'll link that down below. But I use that printer and then, of course, I use the picture in the coloring book. I take this page or whatever page it is that I want to be able to get onto a different paper so that I, because this book, when you order them from Amazon, they come on the Amazon paper and the Amazon paper is fine to color on and I have colored on it before, but I have become, I guess, a paper snob. <laughs> and so now I just get my books from Amazon and I always try to put the images onto my own paper. You guys know I love the Spring Hill paper. I love my tone tan paper. So that is what I do now. But I just take the picture and then I just lay it face down like this onto the printer so that I can make a copy. And when I do that, I actually do this on the book and I make sure, it's not going to harm your book by doing this, but I do this on the book and I make sure that it is very, very flat. And then when it is in my printer, I actually push down like this on the back of the page to make sure that I'm not going to get any extra gray areas or dark areas actually on my page. And what I do, instead of just copying because I need to be able to get it onto the tone tan paper. And as you can see, the tone tan paper is nine by 12. So if you look at the tone tan paper, it's nine by 12. So I need to be able to cut it down. So what I like to do, 
And this is also so that I have all of my um, coloring pages that are on Amazon paper. I also am able to put them into my computer so that I could have them saved for later. I mean, after I go through that work and I get the page exactly like I want it and it doesn't have any like blemishes on the page or whatever and it is perfect for coloring, I like to keep all of those pages in a folder on my computer. The other option is to go ahead and just purchase the PDF versions on some of these colorist website or um, their Etsy store and go ahead and purchase the PDF versions so that you already have a clean copy. But when that is not available, I'm not sure if Christine Karen still has an Etsy store. I believe that she does. And if she does, I'll go ahead and link that down in the description bar below. But I'll also link the copy of the coloring book. A lot of times I'd like to just have the coloring book just because, I don't know, in my mind, it's kind of, I don't know, part of my collection, I guess. And so I just like to have my big cabinet full of my coloring books. <laughs> I know a lot of us are like that. After I do that, I will scan the image into my computer and I will keep the image into my computer. So this way I can actually print it out onto the actual paper. If you don't care to keep a copy like I do in a folder for each coloring book, I'm just, I'm a little bit of an organization freak, I guess. <laughs> But I like to keep a copy for each page in each coloring book and I actually have all my folders labeled and I leave it like that in my uh, computer. And so I just, that's just something I like to do. But if you don't care about that, you can always just make the copy and print it directly onto the paper in your printer by just putting your tone tan paper into your tray. The next thing that I do is, of course, the tone tan paper. Like I said, it is nine by 12. And so, of course, that's not going to fit into your printer. So if you look at the tone tan paper, it's actually perforated on the sides, which is really convenient. So I just get a sheet of it and I pull the sheet out. The next thing I wanna do is I want to be able to get my page which I have up on my computer screen you guys can't see that but I like to be able to just print out as many copies as I want and this is really great for those of you that are beginners that um, are afraid of making a mistake on a coloring page if I already have the coloring page saved into my computer and it's there and I've got a scanning feature on my printer I can always just go back and I can if I mess up I can reprint it and I can use that page to continue to just keep on practicing like those of you that are watching my tutorials on my channel and you want to practice those techniques this is a really great idea so that you can have all of those pictures in your computer already so that you can just reprint them instead of coloring directly in your coloring book when you're afraid that you may mess up whatever you're doing or you just want to continue to practice the technique. So the next thing that I do is I take one of my actual 8x10 um, standard size papers and I'll just use this one. But I kind of just lay it on top and I line it up. And then I just draw a little line. And then I come down here and I draw another little line. So this way I know exactly where I'm going to need to cut it so that it can go through my printer. For those of you that have been watching my videos for quite a long time, you know that I love my doll 133. Well, I reached out to doll and spoke to them because the pencil sharpener that I love so much, you guys, a lot of you guys were complaining and saying you were having trouble being able to purchase the pencil sharpener because it was kind of going in and out of stock and such. I spoke with Doll and in my conversations back and forth, they agreed to partner with me so that I can show some of their products in my videos. But I was so excited to receive this. First, this mat that I have underneath here is a five layer self healing mat. It is absolutely beautiful. I love to keep this down here just to kind of protect the area where I'm coloring or where I'm doing some of my other crafts and such because I do do other things aside from just coloring. So this is a really great mat. I was using 
a Fiskars, if you guys saw before what I was using and what was up underneath my um, coloring pages and when I was doing my reviews and things. I had just a cheap Fiskars mat that I was using that I paid like 10 bucks for from Walmart, but this one is amazing. It color covers much more area for my videos and it's going to improve what my videos look like for you guys because I've got much more area protected and it helps me because I don't have to keep zooming in and zooming out for the small little area that I had covered with my coloring mat. And it's also clear. These come in clear and blue and then I believe black, but I really wanted the clear one because I thought that would really look really nice under whatever it is that I'm showing to y'all. And then they also sent me this beautiful trimmer. Now you guys, this is what I was using before. This thing is ancient. <laughs> I have this from way back when I was scrapbooking and it is a Fiskars too. This is the brand that I've always just known and used. And it is a good brand and this has lasted me quite a long time, but I don't even think I could find the blades for this thing anymore because I don't know, it's old. Like when I tell you this is old, this may even be 15 years old. I don't know. It may even be older than that, but this is definitely old. And that's what I was using to cut down my pages to fit them in my printer. Doll sent me out a big box of goodies and this was one of the things that I chose because I really needed a paper trimmer to be able to do just this. Now this one may be a little bit extreme for what I do but this is their personal trimmer and this cuts up to I believe 18 inches. And this is their personal, their um, personal 508 trimmer. And I believe there is another one that is for up to 12 inches. So it would be more like this size. It's probably a little bit bigger than this one. But this is a really, really nice trimmer. Now, I wrote, I put the lines here on my paper. And so what I'm going to do is I am just going to cut this exactly to where I see the lines. Now I've never used this one before so I am just going to kind of guess here that I would put this right up against the edge on the trimmer. Now this trimmer is really fabulous because it goes back and forth both both directions. It's capable of cutting up to seven sheets. So if I wanted to just pre-cut a bunch of these sheets for my coloring pages, I can stick up to seven sheets in here and it would cut them with a very fine precision. It actually has self-sharpening blades in here and you can go back and forth either direction and it's actually made out of German steel. Let's go ahead and try this and I've got, if you can see, my line over here where I drew it on my pencil. I have it actually lined up with the edge of this. I'm assuming that's where it's going to cut. So we are just going to... Oh my gosh, why is that so satisfying? <laughs> so I'm going to try this again because I see that it wasn't right up against where my line was. And that is probably good enough to be able to fit into my printer. And then I'm going to come back in here again. And you can see my little line that I made up here. And so I'm going to put this into the trimmer again. And I'm going to make sure it's all the way up against this guideline here. And because the blade goes both directions, I didn't have to move it back to the other side. I can just come right back and go the other way. And it is actually a perfect cut. Now I'm going to slide it back in there and I'm going to cut just a little bit more because I don't want that blue showing up on my coloring page. And I'm going to come back the other way and I just cut off that little extra bit. But oh my gosh, that is such a nice trimmer. I absolutely love it and I'm so excited that I don't have to use my old ancient 15 year old trimmer anymore guys <laughs> because I have this beautiful trimmer now. I have reprinted my page and 
If you haven't already seen this video where I did the sparkly iridescent wings and I did the tree branch, I'll make sure I actually have a playlist where everything sits. All of the images that I've done on this are where I've colored on grayscale. So I'll make sure that is linked in the upper right hand corner for you to find. I have some colors here so that we can go ahead and get started with the tutorial. And so the colors that I'm going to use to make my iridescent um, or translucent sleeves I've got my 10% cool gray and my white. I don't remember when I did it exactly which colors I used. So if I need to bring in other colors, I'll let you know what they are as we use them. And I don't remember which colors I used for the skin, so I just picked up some general skin colors that I tend to use. So I've got my light peach and my peach. And I believe this is henna. Yeah, my henna. And then I've got my nectar. So these are pretty much standard skin colors that I tend to use without much thought because I just wanted to be able to show you guys how to do this. Of course, I've used my Doll 133 to get nice, beautiful, sharp leads on all my pencils before I start. The first thing that we need to do is we probably should go ahead and color in the skin. I think that we should do that first before we come in and go over it to make the rest of it look translucent. And just for sake of the demonstration in the tutorial, I'm going probably just going to do one sleeve or I may continue and do the rest, but those will be sped up to music. So I'm gonna show you with this sleeve and how I would make the skin look as though it is under and her sleeve that looks to be translucent is actually translucent. So I'm gonna come in with my lightest color and I'm just going to start here by shading in her skin on her arm. And I'm going to try to make this rather quick. And then we probably should go ahead and do her hand as well. So when I'm doing skin, I just kind of um, start in with my lightest color. That was my light peach. And then I come back with my darker color, which in this case would be my peach. And as you know with Prismacolors, they will kind of go over each other. And this will need to be a little bit darker so that when we come back and we lay the other colors, the whites and the very pale grays over it to give it that, that translucent look, it's actually going to look like it is laying on top. And so you're going to see exactly how we're going to do that. But this was a lot of fun to do. And if you guys have something else on another coloring page, or even if you have this coloring book and you try this tutorial, I would love to see it if you want to share it in my Facebook group. If you're not already a member of my Facebook group, I always have a link down in the description box below if you would like to join us there. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of henna. I'm not going to add, is that henna? Yeah, I don't want to make the skin too dark. And then I'm just going to kind of pull that down a little bit. And then I'm going to go back over it with the peach. I'm not trying to perfect the skin or anything. And just trying to kind of make it dark enough so that I can show you exactly how we're going to come back over and make that... Um, that part of her dress look translucent. And I'm sure that you could probably use this same tutorial for lots of other things. When you guys are watching my tutorials and I'm showing you how to do a certain something, don't always feel like you need to have that page or that coloring page or a specific certain coloring book there are so many other ways that you could apply the tutorials or the things that I show you to other pages. And then I'm just going to pull this through with my light peach. 
And if this wasn't just the tutorial for the translucent sleeve, I would probably put much more effort into making the skin look much better, but I really just want to show you exactly how to make the sleeves look translucent. So I'm going to come back over here and I actually have my white now. And I'm actually going over this with the white in a circular motion. This is my Prismacolor white. And as you can see, it is just kind of layering right over the top of where I just did that skin. Do you see how cool that is? But look how it just kind of makes it look very translucent. And it's because I laid the skin color down first. And then I came right back over it again. And this part of her dress is where I did um, the gold, this little cuff on her sleeve right here. So I'm not gonna come back over that area because that should be gold. So if you look at this one, you can see that the cuff is actually gold and then her um, the translucent part of her dress is above that. So we are going to finish this one and make it look just like the one on the other page. And then I'm gonna take my 10% cool gray and I am just going to add a little bit of dimension in the areas where you guys can see these lines and then I'm going to try to go over the black area with this 10% cool gray, cool gray to try to just fade out those areas or at least lighten them up. But I bet you guys thought it was really difficult to make her sleeves look translucent. And it's really so, so easy. But if I just go over this area here, it's kind of making her arm stand out just a little bit more. And it still looks translucent. But if you just use your lightest gray when you're doing something like this, look how neat this is. And I can just come over it again and I can add a little bit more white. So I have my Posca and I'm going to use this just to kind of outline the edges and get rid of that black line. And you do need to come through and move it around a bit with your finger so that you don't have that very, very thick line there. But I have found that this works a little bit better than the gel pen. And sometimes if you just want to kind of dot it, like if I come through here and I just do a few little dots, it tends to work better because I'm just kind of laying down the color, but it alleviates having that harsh, thick line. And see how much better that looks? And then just kind of tap it with your finger. But I think I used the gel pen the first time when I did this.
but sometimes the gel pen just doesn't want to go down or doesn't cooperate and a lot of times the Posca tends to work a little bit better just with the way that it smears just because it is a paint But I don't know, I think that almost looks better than what I did the first time. And then if you look at it and you think, okay, well, I think the Posca maybe laid down a little bit too much, then you can come back with your white and you can go over the areas. See how right there where it kind of looked like a little bit of a thick line? I just come back over it with my white and I just kind of go in a circular motion and it will actually lighten that up and kind of move the Posca around. But look how cool that is. Like it just, I do this all the time with my Posca and I have found that if I'm not using the gel pen and I use the Posca instead, it works so much better with my Prismacolors. And I really think that this just turned out better than when I did it the first time. And this is my gray. I'm just kind of coming back and adding a little bit of the darker shade in here on the edges. And it's still just kind of moving that Posca around. And then if I wanted to make her skin or her arm show even more, I would just come in with my darker skin color and I would just lay some more of that down there. Now with this paper, you can get quite a few layers and you're not going to be able to get as many layers as you would on a much toothier paper but you can still get quite a few layers and then here where I lay down the darker of the skin color, I'm just kind of blending it in a little bit with my peach. And then you can just keep going over it until you've got the look that you want. But I think that looks really good. And it just really makes it look like her sleeve is translucent. And I love the way that it turned out. Another really cool idea is if you look at it and you think, oh, well, I made the white part look way too white or I laid down some color or too much color somewhere, you can always come in with your eraser and you can actually go over it with your eraser and just kind of pull some of that color up so that because the white on this tone tan paper is really going to show up a whole lot just because of the difference in the um, colors and this tone tan paper really makes things stand out but just by coming over this and going over it with my eraser it really made all that much of a difference like it really did. It took up a lot of that white that was just like a very bright white that was really just vibrant. And it took some of that away and it made it much less pronounced. I think I need to go up in here in this little corner right here. And it's actually taking away some of the Posca as well. So that is super cool. And there you've got a translucent sleeve. And it actually looks way better than what I did the first time. I think I like this one better. I'm going to go ahead and speed it up to music. And I'm going to do 
this part here and her other sleeve so that you guys could see it all just kind of come together. So let's go ahead and do that now. So here it is finished and I love the way that it turned out. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial and it just goes to show that when you do something the second time and you just continue to keep practicing or maybe experiment and try other things that sometimes whatever you did previously will turn out even better. Like if I look at this one I can see that I used when I did this one I used the um, I may have added a little bit of cream in here or did something a little bit different because it looks a little bit different than the other one. And I believe that I used a white gel pen. I probably used my Uniball gel pen when I did it. I don't remember because I didn't really do it on camera, but I'm just guessing. I have been using my Posca a whole lot more in my more recent tutorials. And I have found that the Posca tends to work a lot better than a white gel pen. And it spreads around a lot better and you can go over it with your Prismacolor pencils and kind of just like spread it around and whatever. And if you notice on this side, I figured out exactly what I wanted it to look like so I didn't have to come back over it with my mono eraser but if you ever think that you or feel like you lay down too much pigment you can always come back with your mono eraser and you can actually pull up a layer of your Prismacolor pencils or whatever colored pencils you're using so I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial I will make sure that the um, other tutorials that I did on this page are linked up in the upper right hand corner for you to find those whether it is the tutorials or the actual playlist so that you can find everything I've ever done on grayscale and if you would like me to come back and continue to do a little bit more on this page please let me know in the comments below I absolutely love this page and I really would like to finish it but time has just gotten away from me with everything in life and trying to bring more and more tutorials to y'all and working on my tips and tricks and hacks series that you guys really seem to be loving and enjoying. 
So if you would like to see more or whatever it is that you would like to see, please let me know in the comments below. I always check my comments, I always read them, and I always try to bring you guys the tutorials that you are going to love and enjoy and just things that you want to see. Everything that you've seen me use in this video will be linked in the description box below. And if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and have your bell notifications on so that you always know when I post new content. I will see y'all in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.